Here we're going to be looking at an inner company investment here in bonds. And these bonds were originally issued at their face value. So we have a five year, 8%, $100,000 bond issued on 11X1 here by uh, the subcorporation, uh, Corporation S here for $100,000. And that was issued to an outside party here. And then two years later on 12X3 here, it was repurchased here by the parent corporation or Corporation P here for $103,600 hundred dollars at a premium. So looking at the difference here, it's viewed here as a loss on the retirement of that bond of three thousand six hundred dollars. Now that's from the consolidated viewpoint where you have debt with a book value of a hundred thousand dollars and then it was retired here for a hundred three thousand six hundred dollars with a loss here of thirty six hundred dollars. Now looking at our end of the year a trial bat what we'd record here in our trial balance for the end of the year 1231x3 here so uh, going up to our uh, parent corporation here they'd have interest receivable of eight thousand dollars here and then here is the key how we divide up this interest income here so we had an investment here in corporation s and the bonds we'd be crediting that for the amortiz amortized the amount of that premium here. There was three years left, a $3,600 premium on that bond here. So there was $1,200 per year here. And that would be a credit to investment here in corpor uh, subcorporation S's bonds here. And then the rebalance here would go to the interest income here, a credit that for $6,800. And that was it had an interest adjustment here. That would be the $8,000 receivable less the amortized amount here in the bond of $1,200 for $6,800. And then we'd also record here for the subcorporation S here, the subsidiary, they had interest expense of $8,000 and an interest payable of $8,000 here, credit to that interest payable. Okay, for our adjustments, first we have to determine the loss here at the end of the year for the bond here. We take the cost of the bond less the amortization for the year for the bond. That gives us our investment remaining in the bond here. And less the bond's carrying value, that gives us the loss remaining here in the bond. And then for the loss for the amortization, we just take the interest expense less the interest revenue here. And the difference give us, gives us the loss here for amortization. And totaling those, that would be our total loss here remaining. Okay, now for our intercompany eliminations here, and that would be the end of the year 1231X3, or one year after the parent purchased this bond. Now we have the loss remaining here at the year end. We have an investment of the bonds, $102,400 less their carrying value of 100000 gives us here a $2,400 remaining loss here for that bond. And then the loss for the amortization during the year, we had $8,000 interest expense less the interest revenue revenue of six point eight thousand dollars for one point two thousand dollars here so the total loss adds up to three point six thousand dollars and then for our eliminations here well we have first this interest receivable payable here we'd credit interest receivable for eight thousand dollars and debit interest payable for eight thousand dollars and then we have the investment in the bond here we credit that for a hundred two thousand four hundred dollars and then we'd also have the bonds payable here debit that for a hundred thousand dollars and then we have our interest income here we debit that for six point eight thousand dollars here and then our interest expense here we credit that for eight thousand dollars and then we also have this total loss here on one two x3 here of three thousand six hundred dollars so we'd go and we'd put um, a debit our loss on the bond retirement here for three thousand six hundred dollars Okay, now looking at our income distribution here, and starting with our subsidiary corporation or Corporation S here. They had an internally generated net income here of $32,000. Now, that includes this interest expense here on the bond here. And then they had an interest adjustment here. That was the amortized amount here on the bond. And then they have adjusted net income. We'd, use, we'd be subtracting out this interest adjustment here from the internally generated net income. And then there was a 90-10 split here between the parent and the subsidiary. So the subsidiary would be getting 10% here of this adjusted net income. Now looking at the parent corporation here, parent, our 
Corporation P here. They have an internally generated net income of $66,800. Now it includes the interest revenue here received or receivable on that bond. And then they would get 90% here of the subsidiaries corporation adjusted net income. And then the controlling interest here would be the sum between the internally generated net income and then the subsidiary share they're going to receive here from the subsidiary. So they'd have a controlling interest here of $94,500. Okay, now let's look at our intercompany eliminations and adjustments here based on the end of year 1231X4 here. Now that's the second year or the end of the second year after the repurchase of these bonds here by the parent corporation P here. So the loss remaining at year end here would be the investments and bonds here at the year end of X4 would have been $101,200. Now that's based on $103,600 cost less the amortized amount here of $2,400. That's for two years here of amortization. The carrying value of the bond is $100,000, so the loss remaining here would be the difference, $1,200. Now, we also have the loss for the amortization during the year here. The interest expense was $8,000, uh, less the interest revenue here of $6,800 gives us a loss here on the amortization uh, for the year here of $1,200. So the total loss here on 1, 2, uh, X4 here was $2,400, the sum of the um, uh, bond here and then the interest expense here. Now this $2,400 gets divided up in this fashion here. That's the remaining amortized loss here that has to be amortized here. So Corporation P, their retained earnings here, would they would have $2,400 worth of that loss here times 90% their ownership. Uh, they, that would be allocated $2,000.16 here, $2,16,000 here would go against the retained earnings. And then for the subcorporation S here, their retained earnings would be adjusted in this fashion. They would get 10% since the 10% of the amortized amount here of $2,400 uh, remaining here. So uh, that would give them $0.24,000. So the sum of the two here, Corporation P's retained earnings less Corporation S's retained earnings adjustment would give $2.4,000 remaining. Okay, next for our consolidation eliminations and adjustments here and looking at our consolidation worksheet. First we have the interest receivable and a payable here. So we credit our interest receivable for $8,000 and debit our interest payable for $8,000. And then uh, our investment here in the subcorporations bonds, we'd credit that for $101,200 and then uh, for our bonds payable here we debit that for $100,000. Now for our retained earnings adjustments here. First for the uh, parent corporation here and that's based on the 11X4 date here. We'd credit that for their portion here two point one six thousand dollars and then for the subsidiaries retained earnings now that's based on the one one x three date here we'd debit that here for point two four thousand dollars and then this interest expense here uh, for we eliminate the interest income here by debiting that for six point eight thousand dollars and then credit our interest expense here for eight thousand dollars Okay, now for our income distribution here. First looking at Corporation S, we'd have the internally generated net income here of $32,000. Now that includes the interest expense here of $8,000. And then we'd have the adjustment based on the amortization amount. And in this case, we're adding it here to the internally generated net income. So we get adjusted in net income here of $33,400. And their share, uh, the subsidiary share would be 10% in this case. So they get a non-controlling interest here of $3,034,000. Now looking here at the parent corporation, their income distribution here, or Corporation P here, they had internally generated net income. Let's just say at $66,800. Now that includes the interest revenue here of $8,000. Now they would also re be receiving 90% of uh, Corporation S or the subs adjusted income here and then that their total amount here, their controlling interest, the parent corporation here would be the sum of the internally generated income here plus the subsidiary portion they get here from the subsidiary. So they'd have a controlling interest here of 96,000.86.